Welcome to the United Methodist Church at Mount Tabor Sunday Worship Service. Today is second Sunday in Lent. This is February 28, 2021. Our announcements for today are as follows. Our youth are meeting today at 1 p.m. and um, they're having a great time and great reflection, in fact. Um, and they're preparing some surprises for us uh, for that later on will be announced. So uh, keep praying for our youth and for the leaders that are working hard with the youth. And uh, we're having a great time with them. Also, we have the uh, today, uh, February 28th is the last Sunday of the month. So it's the day to bring your food contributions for the food pantry. Uh, from 10 to 12, we will be collecting um, contactless. Uh, you may bring your food and to the uh, entrance at the church, to the front door at the church, and uh, we will be there collecting food this Sunday. Uh, and, and also every Sunday, every last Sunday of every month, we will continue collecting food as it is necessary. Thank you so much for your contributions uh, that have helped uh, to Morris County food pantries, particularly the Interfaith Food Pantry. We have the Easter flowers, um, a, a sale going on, and um, it, you may buy your flowers through the office. You may fill out a form that is due on March 21st. If you're interested either in buying flowers or in making a donation in memory of someone, someone dear, uh, or in honor of someone dear, you may do that. Uh, please contact the office for that. Lenten devotionals are going on every day. I'm sending a devotional to the um, church members. Uh, I know they're challenging. I know that um, uh, I've been discussing and talking with some of you, and I know that uh, these devotionals may be a little bit challenging at this time. But perhaps we need to be challenged. Perhaps we need to look beyond our comfort zones. And um, so I will... I will continue monitoring uh, the devotionals and, and if it's necessary to look for other sources and to do some other things, we will be taking care of that. Also on Wednesdays uh, at 6.30 p.m., we're having our Wednesdays a Zoom devotional. It's short. It's not a service. Um, we will pray together. We will come together. We will share uh, some of our insights and we will share our prayers so you are uh, welcome to come and join us we we're doing this uh, together with uh tibo united methodist church which is the other church that i pa that i'm the pastor let us take a moment to center our ourselves uh for the call to worship today Pilgrims, we are invited to journey through this season of Lent towards the one who calls us each by a new name. Disciples, we walk with Jesus wherever he leads us, putting our fears and doubts and longings behind us. Believers, we seek to trust God who always surprises us, whose promises take on flesh and blood in the good news called Jesus. Amen. Please join us in the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Please join me in the opening prayer. The people may turn their backs on us. You do not hide your face from us. The others may try to take away our hope. You assure us of that future waiting for us. You speak your name, inscrutable creator, and it is enough. When we try to dictate our fears to you, you invite us to follow you into self-denial and service. As we struggle to shape our lifestyles to yours, you carry us with you wherever you go. You speak your good news. Teacher of open hearts and is enough. Though we have done nothing to earn them, you pour out the gifts of grace and mercy upon us. When we stumble over our lack of trust, you set us back on our feet to follow you into the kingdom. You speak your peace, breath of, breath of holiness, and it is enough. Amen. Now Hillary will share the children's message. Okay, now it's time for our children's message. So if we could get all the children to the room. Wait, what? What? What's that? I'm um, turn. Oh, oh, there you are. <laughs> I got all turned around, didn't I? That reminds me of uh, today's scripture. In the story, Jesus tells his disciples that some bad things are going to happen to him. So one of the disciples, Peter, tells Jesus to just avoid those bad things. Now, I don't know about you, but I would not be comfortable telling Jesus what to do. By telling Jesus what he should and shouldn't do, it was like Peter got turned around and then he thought he was the leader. And once Peter did that, he was no longer following Jesus. And Jesus was like, dude, did you forget who I am? I am the son of God and I have to do these things. God sent me here to do these things. So get behind me because that's where you have to be so that you can follow me. The mistake Peter made in today's story is an easy one to make. Peter got so concerned and worried about Jesus's safety that he got all mixed up and forgot to keep following Jesus. The same thing can happen to us. For lots of different reasons, we can get turned around and start moving in a different direction from where Jesus is going, which is one of the reasons that we worship together and we read and talk about the Bible together and pray together to remind us of the direction Jesus wants us to go. Reminders to pay attention to God. When we keep following Jesus and learn how to pay attention to God, then we'll be better examples of God's love to everyone around us. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for Jesus, who shows us how to pay attention to the right things. Please help us remember to follow him. Amen. Have a great day. Let us share our joys and concerns. It is a joy that the weather, at least in our area, has been better. We have seen the sun come out. Also the weather in other places that we're having the tragedies like in Texas, uh, it's at least the weather is getting better. The concerns is all the people that are suffering, um, we place them in God's hands because of the weather, people that have died because they have been cold and they have frozen to death. 
literally. Also, we have people that um, eh, are, are sick in our midst. Uh, let's keep praying for them. There's good news also that some of them are getting better and are coming home. And we give thanks to that. Another good news is that the vaccine, uh, lots of people have been getting it already. I had my first shot and thanks God it wasn't that bad. Um, I hope that my second shot, I don't know, but I pray to God that it, it is not as bad as others have reported. Um, we also have some concerns for people that um, are working, uh, are tired of working from their homes, children that are tired of working in from their computers. Some people are already getting so tired of that, that they have become um, kind of depressed and uh, let us keep them in our prayers. Let us continue praying for the unity of our church and for the unity of our country. Please join me in the prayer for today. Dear God, as we come today in prayer, we give you thanks for, for those that are back home, that are feeling better, that um, for those that have seen the sun come out and for those that have seen the sun not only the sun in the sky but also the sun of hope in their lives we give you thanks for that because you are always with us we give you thanks for that we ask you god to uh, keep keep um, safe the people in texas and the people that have been in the path of this terrible winter storm we ask you, God, that um, uh, you help us in ways that we can be of service to those that have suffered. We pray for those that are still in the hospital and for those that are going on surgeries and for those that are having a, a very sad moment because they are tired of, of COVID, they are tired of the situation where we are. We want to thank you, God, for the vaccine that we hope it's going to make us uh, be able to come back together soon. And we pray for that. We need the community of faith. We need to come back together. And we ask you, God, to be with us and be with each and everyone that have been suffering and are suffering in these days. As children of God, uh, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, is, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture for today comes from, we're going to read two scriptures today. One is from the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 to 7 and 15 to 16. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between you, me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abraham fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you offsprings after you throughout their generations 
for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offsprings after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her. And moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Now a reading from the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my follower, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit to them to gain the whole world and for forfeit their lives? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? For their life? Those of you who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man, will also be ashamed when he comes in glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your word and for allowing us to reflect on it day by day. Prepare our hearts so your word become alive in our hearts, in our minds, and in our spirits. So we can become doers of your word in this world. May the meditation of our minds and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, my Lord, my God, my rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. How many times we have heard the phrase, deny yourself and take up your cross? Perhaps more times than you can remember. And many times we have surrendered to Jesus and our hearts have been filled with joy and love, and we have been serving God in the world in ways we never imagined before. It is always a joy to hear the testimony of people who have been touched by the Holy Spirit and have regained their hopes and strength to start or continue a journey of service. Even if we have embraced God's calling and we have taken up our cross to follow Jesus, it is always good to take a time to pause and to reflect on God's call to us and what it means in times such as this. It is good to reflect on how well are we doing. It is good to reflect on where are we going. It is good to reflect on what else may God be calling us to do. As, as Methodists, uh, we are called to uh, reflect on our journey 
towards Christian perfection, and we are called to reflect on how well are we doing in our journey. As calling of disciples of Jesus, who has accepted God's grace, it is good to continue growing in our faith to attain that perfect love that makes us one with humanity, that perfect love that makes us one with creation and one with God, that brings us back to that essential nature that God created in us. But because of sin, we have fallen. Unfortunately, we also must recognize that the phrase take up your cross many times have been placed out of context completely. In order to sustain abuse, oppression, vilify other, or even to maintain addictions. Each of us have a call. Each of us have a cross. Jesus is not saying his disciples to take Jesus' cross. Jesus' cross is our salvation. Jesus went through suffering, agony, and cruel assassination in the cross at the hands of Rome and of the religious establishment. That was Jesus' cross. He took it up for us. And this is not what Jesus is telling us to do. This is not what Jesus is telling the disciples to do. Jesus is telling them to take their cross and follow him. Each of us have a cross to carry. But taking the cross is not taking abuses from others or staying in abusive relationship. Likewise, for those who are suffering from addictions, their cross is not the addiction. For those who are confused, lonely, or desperate, their cross is not the confusion or their loneliness or desperation. For those in these situations, perhaps the cross is surrendering to Jesus all of who you are, all of what you have, all, all the pain that you are going through. Surrendering to Jesus all your heavy burdens. So with Jesus' help, you may conquer that with Je what Jesus has already conquered. See, Jesus gave us freedom. Jesus wants us free. Jesus doesn't want us to be in abusive relationship, in oppression, in slavery. Jesus has freed us from all of that. We just need to take Jesus' freedom into our lives and make it one in us. In the Gospel of Matthew, we find Jesus telling his disciples, if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. Take the joke. I give you. Put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble and you will find rest. This jo joke is easy to bear and this burden is light. Jesus' cross is not a cross of abuse. It's not a cross that oppresses is a cross that liberates us. It's a cross that gives us life. It's a cross that makes the kingdom come in the here and now. A kingdom of peace, a kingdom of joy, a kingdom of freedom, a kingdom of love, a kingdom of life. For some of us, our crosses could be becoming more humble. Loving more our neighbors and those who are different to us. Others may be taking care of someone. Other crosses may be sharing more with others. Yet others praying for others, praying with others, sharing the word of God with others. 
Jesus is telling his disciples, take your cross and follow me. He's not saying, take your, take your cross simply. Just take your cross. No, he goes farther. He goes, follow me. So the cross that Jesus is asking his disciples to take is their own calling to make the kingdom of God a reality. Jesus' work in this world when he came was to establish the kingdom of God. And if we are to follow Jesus, that is what Jesus is calling us to do. The kingdom of God in the here and now. Not only a reality after death or a reality after the end of the world, but a reality of here and now in the world that we live, in the moment that we are called to live. This is the moment where we are called to serve. A kingdom that is a kingdom of love, a kingdom of peace. So we make the kingdom of God a reality every time we act justly, every time we do no harm, and every time we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And every time we show love to God and we worship God with our true hearts, our true minds, and our true spirit. In the Old Testament reading for today, God talks to Abraham and makes a covenant with him that is also extended to us today. A covenant that is a covenant with God and you and God and me. It's a covenant for us as followers of Jesus because we are spiritual children of Abraham. God is a God of covenant and promises. And the covenant that God made with Abraham a thousand, thousands of years ago is a covenant that is alive today. The God of Abraham and Sarah is also our God. This is the covenant. God told Abraham, I will be your God and the God of your descendants. So that God of Abraham and Sarah, that God that liberated the, the Hebrew people from the oppression of the Pharaoh in Egypt, that God that have followed humanity through the whole existence, that God who is Jesus' Father and who is Jesus, one with Jesus and one with the Holy Spirit. It is a triune God, a God that acts in love within Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That day God told Abraham, walk before me and be Blaze blameless. What does it mean to walk before God? What happens when we walk before God? God is watching us. God is covering our backs. See, if we go in front of God, God is there behind us. God is there for us when we fall. God is there for us to nurture us. And then we have Jesus saying, take your cross and follow me. If we think about it, God has chartered the way from us, for us. Not like Abraham that was walking in front of God, trying to charter a way for how to do it. Jesus figured it out already. Jesus did that for us. That is part of Jesus' salvation history. Jesus saved us from our own stumbling. Jesus saves us from our sins. He showed the way. He showed us the way of how to do it. And if we walk in front of God, and if we follow Jesus, we're covered. And then we're also covered by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who strengthens us. The Holy Spirit who inspires us. The Holy Spirit who guides us and helps us along the way. 
So when we walk in front of God, and when we follow Jesus, we are covered in every single way. We just need to say yes and start our journey. Just need to say yes to God's grace that is free for all. And if you have not discovered yet, what is the cross that you must bear to follow Jesus? This Lenten season is a good time to start a conversation with Jesus. Like Abraham did with God in his time. And ask Jesus, what is the cross that I must bear to follow you? What I need to do? This Lenten season is a good time. We may discover what we need to do. We may discover what we need to give up. Maybe we need to give up more than chocolate or coffee or sodas. There's so many other things that are more, I mean, that's, it's not that that's not important, but maybe that's only the beginning. Maybe it's a way to say, I'm not going to do it on my own terms anymore. Our Lenten devotional is helping to reflect on that. How to do it not on our own way, a way other than our own. That's, that's the name of, of the reflection. And we may discover it during this time what we really need to give up and what we really need to, go, to do in order to walk before God and to follow Jesus and to hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us, guiding us, and strengthening us. May the triune God help us during this season as we go along. God bless you. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Guiding Lord, even though we hesitated on our Lenten journey, we vow to come with you through all the trials and fears towards the cross. Today we face the challenge which true commitment brings. Are we willing to offer our whole selves to you in service? We would like to think that we can do that. But we are aware of how many times 
we have turned away from service and instead focused on our own desires. Remind us again of the commitment you would want us to give. If we are to become disciples, forgive our stubbornness and fears. Lead us forward, gracious Lord, up these steps toward the cross. Amen. My friends, the journey of discipleship is never easy. But you can be assured that you will not be in this journey alone. Place your trust in Jesus. Amen. It is the moment to remember that as we are in this Lenten journey, we are also in our journey to giving all of what we are. And all of what we are includes our offerings. So this community can continue its ministry, not only to the community, but to the world. You may continue sending your offerings through Giftify, through the conference, or to the office. Let us pray for the offerings. God of all, you love us and have claimed us. As you bless Sarah and Abraham, you have invited us into the blessing of connection within the family of humanity, whom you continue to bless. We give our tithes and offerings in celebration of the depth of our blessings and pray that they will be strengthened the church across the world to bless all your children. In the holy name of Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray in gratitude of all you have given us. Amen. As we live today from our service, let us remember that God walks with us. Let us remember that Jesus is calling us to take up our crosses and to follow him. Let us continue through our Lenten journey with the faith and hope that the kingdom of God is a reality, that the kingdom of God starts with us where we are. Wherever you go, whatever words you speak, be God's words, be God's light, be God's love, and be assured that God walks with you, that God strengthens you, that God will inspire and give you hope to continue on. Be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We may go in peace. Amen. The offering, offering envelopes are still there at the uh, table's treasure uh, for you to pick up. And uh, it's a good time to uh, roam around the table's treasure and look for the treasures that we have there that you can buy at a very discounted price. And uh, this is a ministry that helps the church and a ministry that uh, where people involved are also uh, welcoming people as they come through their doors. If you cannot pick up your envelopes, or if you don't want envelopes, uh, perhaps you're using the Givelify or direct deposit, please call the church and uh, we will then um, email you and give you the uh, reference of the uh, Givelify or, and then we will remove you from the envelopes list. Tabor, I would like to say thank you. Thank you for giving to our church. Because of your offerings and your givings and your tithings, we're able to keep the church going. Because of your offerings, I'm able to work with the youth on Sundays each week and teach them the Bible. We're also able to do mission and collect funds for the Interfaith Food Pantry with the youth and teach them about food insecurity. 
We're so grateful for that. Thank you so much. And please continue to give as you can. We have a few ways here we can give to the church. One way is through the website at GNJ. Um, it's www.gnjumc.org. You should maybe see that on the screen below. Also, you can send your funds or your donations to the United Methodist Church at Mount Tabor. We have our mailing address. That's 5 Simpson Avenue, P.O. Box 29, Mount Tabor, New Jersey, 07878. Also, if you have the app or you can do it on your computer, it's through Givelify. I just went in there to check it out, and it's not so hard. You go in, you go to about half, you go to givelify.com, you go about halfway down the page, and there's a big button that says donate today. You click on that, and then it says church organization. Right in there, you type in, I put Mount Tabor, and it came up as United Methodist Church at Mount Tabor, and it had our address underneath there, 5 Simpson Avenue. So I clicked in there. Once you're in there, it asks you to create an account. So your, your information is secure and you'll create a username and a password from there. So we have a few ways we can collect. We are so appreciative of your donations. <laughs> 